Singapore has agreed in principle to set up an air travel bubble with Hong Kong. Travellers will not be subject to quarantines or stay-home notices, and there will be no restrictions on itinerary or purpose of travel. However, travellers will need to test negative for COVID-19 likely before departure. While details are still being worked out, Singaporeans could be travelling to Hong Kong in several weeks. Transport Minister Ong Yi Kang says the reopening of borders will come as a relief to many travellers. I think it's a significant step. It's a small step, but a significant one. Because both Hong Kong and Singapore, we are regional aviation hubs, even global aviation hubs. And for two of us to be able to control the epidemic and come together to discuss and establish this air travel bubble, I think hopefully this sets a model and a template for us to forge more of such relationships and partnerships. Basically, our, our concept is this, uh, no restrictions on, on uh, segments yeah, or on purpose of travel. So students, you know, interns, they can all go uh, or tourists can all go. No restrictions or itinerary, no control itinerary, but replace it with tests, especially a pre-departure test. But beyond that, each territory, each party should be also free to impose your own administrative arrangements. For example, you may want an on-arrival test as well, so be it or you want trace together, uh, or, or measure temperature every day, you know, whatever that is, or a simple administrative approval, not the kind of MOM approval. So all this, I think we should have uh, independently, we can decide. Let's welcome The Straits Times News Editor, Karamjit Kaur, to take this discussion further. Hey Karam, now this is the first two-way air travel bubble between Singapore and another country. How is it different from the previous special travel arrangements we have with other countries? Right. So um, it's different uh, on uh, several levels. Um, if you look at what we have with other countries, uh, the one uh, that you know announced today is an air travel bubble. Uh, we also have this, you know, unilateral schemes with uh, countries like New Zealand and Brunei, uh, Vietnam, um, Australia as well, excluding the state of Victoria. But that's really very uh, one track. Um, you know, in the sense that uh, we uh, welcome visitors from these countries, including leisure travellers, mm -hmm. to come to Singapore, uh, subject to certain conditions, including a COVID-19 test and all that. But um, the other way, you know, uh, those countries have not yet opened their borders uh, to uh, travellers from Singapore. So uh, you, you know, are not allowed to uh, visit those countries because they still have all these travel bans in place. Um, the other scheme we have is the uh, reciprocal green lane scheme, and that's for essential business and official travel. And for that scheme, uh, we have arrangements. Uh, China was the first that we had such an arrangement with. Uh, we also have since then inked uh, similar deals with Malaysia, um, with uh, South Korea and all that as well. But uh, again, that's not for leisure travelers, only for essential business travel uh, and official travel. Also, you're subject to a controlled itinerary. Yeah. So this air travel bubble is different. Um, it's also open to leisure travelers and it's two ways. Uh, so, you know, that means that people from Singapore can uh, visit Hong Kong as leisure travelers, provided um, they, you know, do the COVID-19 PCR test. Uh, they will not be subject to a quarantine. So you don't need to stay for 14 days or, you know, uh, in uh, uh, dedicated facilities, you are free to uh, move around. Some of the details are, you know, still have not been worked out yet. Um, so we are still waiting for some of uh, that to come true. Uh, but it, it won't be free for all in the sense that there will be a quota. Um, exactly what that number is, uh, both sides have uh, been quite uh, a mum on that. So those are some of the details that we are waiting for. Right. Well, building on what you said, um, with virtually no restrictions, no need uh, to quarantine, and travellers needing uh, to only pass uh, the COVID-19 test, do you expect Singaporeans then to jump at the opportunity to finally, you know, go overseas? I think for sure they will. Um, so, you know, when we uh, had the doorstop this afternoon with uh, Transport Minister Ong Yi Kang, uh, he also uh, made the point that he expects um, demand to be uh, higher than uh, supply. Uh, the one question mark, of course, is uh, how much is this PCR test going to cost? Um, he didn't uh, uh, comment on that, uh, said that, you know, that really is a commercial decision that will be left uh, to the airlines. But I'm pretty sure that demand will be very high. If you look at some of the schemes we already have, 
Uh, you know, we announced cruises to nowhere not too long ago. We had a story um, uh, two days ago saying that, you know, within the first five days, something like uh, several thousands of uh, bookings had already been made. Um, before that, you know, we talked about the, uh, you know, dinners and the lunches on uh, Singapore Airlines' A380. That has gotten overwhelming response and that flight is not even taking off anywhere. So clearly there is this um, pent up demand and, and people really are looking to just, you know, get away, do whatever is available. So yeah, I, I do expect that demand for this is going to be quite strong. Now, you know, we heard Minister Ong call this arrangement a small but significant step, you know, um, and this and that it could set the model for more partnerships. Now, I guess the question is, you know, a lot of people are very excited about this now, but what are the other countries do you think where this could work? So I think the one thing that's uh, been made very clear, and this has been re uh, repeatedly stressed uh, by the members of the task force as well, that it is very important when Singapore picks uh, countries to have such arrangements with that we look at the um, you know COVID-19 situation in those countries. Uh, Singapore has to have a, a very high level of confidence in the healthcare systems there, also in you know how they manage to uh, detect and contain cases. So I think if you look at the countries, we have the reciprocal green lanes, with, for example, that's for business travel. So we have that with China, we have it with um, Brunei, South Korea, uh, Japan, uh, very soon with Indonesia as well. Um, so I think that tells you that these are the countries that the Singapore government um, has a high level of confidence in. So um, I would expect that if uh, similar air travel bubbles are going to be negotiated, it would probably be with these um, countries. I, I don't expect that we will do the same for you know countries in, in Europe, for example, or you know, uh, because you are seeing a resurgence in the number of cases there. Uh, so I think those are the criteria that will be looked at before any decision is made on, you know, um, who else we will have uh, similar air travel uh, bubbles with. Well, Karam, it's always uh, wonderful to hear from you. We've been speaking to news editor at The Straits Times, Karam Jitkor.